I see it. You see it? Yay. Welcome everyone. We are live on Facebook tonight. Woohoo! All right, we had a few technical difficulties there, but we are on. Praise God. Just encourage everybody to uh, share. Uh, hopefully you can share this and uh, be a part of um, what is happening tonight. Amen. So um, anyway, you have something to say, dear? Good evening. Looking <laughs> forward to this. It's going to be good. Yes, it's going to be great. We have a special guest tonight. Her name is Marilyn Wallace, and she's going to, there she is. Yay. Can you say something real quick, Marilyn? I'm so excited to be here. I, I can't hardly contain myself. <laughs> I know, I know. It's so awesome. Well, you know what? We're going to just pray and get right to it. So, Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for those that are hearing and listening and that will listen to this later. God, let it bring life to the hearer, strength and faith and encouragement to everyone, I pray. And God, just guide Marilyn's words tonight. We give you all the glory for what you are doing in her life and in the life of other people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, Marilyn, um, uh, can you just say a little bit of something about yourself before you get started? Okie dokie. Um, let's see. I just celebrated 65 glorious years. Ooh. So I'm just, I'm thrilled about that. Um, you don't look that. <laughs> I, am, I am a pacemaker defibrillator technician for uh, a Dignity Health, I almost said for Dominion Worship Center. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. you, 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 one of those gonna, D's, okay. Um, get some paces today. Uh -huh. Get some points going. <laughs> there you go. I just love patients. Yes. But anyway, I'm, um, I, oh gosh, I am, I'm a prophetic intercessor at heart. And I have a heart for God's people and for especially for leadership. And God sends me on assignment to cover a leadership. And that's been my way of life for quite a few years now. And, um, and so I know that I'm on assignment for this body mm -hmm. and, um, I'm excited about it. That's wonderful. Well, I know um, we've had you speak at a, um, a women's Bible study before, and I know that you speak out and about, um, but something tragic happened to you several months ago. And um, can you, when you share, can you give like time frames? of uh, when things happened and um, just what happened to you and what you experienced right at COVID or after whatever it is. So we give you the freedom. Okay, so, so first of all, what at the beginning of the year, the house got flooded, was out for three months. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> out of the house. But God graciously brought me back in uh, right before this whole, you know, COVID thing. And I was in the house for a month, furloughed off from my job for a month. And then this happened. I was at, I was at work. I didn't have any pacemaker patients that day. So I was up at the front when the patients come in checking temperatures, asking questions as they come through the door. And this was on June the 9th. And I remember as I was sitting down, there was no patients in yet. And I was sitting down. I heard, 
I had been chilled for about maybe three hours, just cold, extremely cold. I mean, I've never been, I could, there's nothing I could do to get warm. And um, all of a sudden in my belly, I heard, <coughs> and I felt pressure and it was like something pushed on my belly one after the other. And then after that, there was like three different waves of, I, it just was waves. And I felt like I was gonna go down. And I just remember hanging on. I said, Lord, I don't know what this is. I said, Father, I don't know what this is. And I just shut my eyes and it happened three times. And, and, and thank God there was nobody, no patience but the receptionist was there and I just turned around and made sure that she was still there. And I was like, okay, okay. And then I said, I don't, I don't know what it is, Lord. I have no idea, but all of a sudden I felt somewhat better after it happened, somewhat. So I, so I went, I had to tell my supervisor that I had chills you have any type of symptoms you have to tell, right? Yeah, right. Maybe COVID, okay, you have to go. You can't be here. I was like, oh. I didn't say what else happened, but I went to the doctor, the doctor, and I'm not saying no names, misdiagnosed me. Mm. Oh, okay. Misdiagnosed me. Um, I got the letter to go back to work and by then, after a while, it was a slow decline. I was, I still worked for a week, but it was- Now, were slow, you in pain? I, were you in pain this whole time? It was coming and going. It was coming and going. And um, so it, 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 there was, it relieved some pressure when my appendix ruptured which I didn't know that that's what happened until later, but it did relieve some pressure because I, I just felt bloated and, 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 my, and I felt like I needed to take something all the time. Mm. And um, so he released me to go back to work. So I got back in, um, didn't want to miss any you know, time of work, and then little by little, I was like, my concentration, my concentration, it was, I was, I was, I had to use a lot of sticky notes. My concentration was off. And by then, I guess a lot of the um, infection or the, um, the poison was starting to go into my system. And so, um, and still, you are unaware that your appendix. I was unaware, and it was that it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday that following week, and I was like, "Oh, I cannot. I can't. I can't work with the programmers anymore. I cannot work with voltage sensitivity. I cannot do this anymore." I said, "Oh, I can't do this," and then. What the final straw was in the, that night, I just couldn't get comfortable. I could not get comfortable. I went from one side of the bed to the other. Um, I tried to put hot packs. I tried everything. Um, and so I was like, I got to drive myself to the ER. I can't take it. And so I got on my kid's group test. I said, I'm going to ER. And then all of a sudden my son, he works in McFarland. He said, mommy, I'll be right there. I went, I'm just going down the street. I'll be right there. So when your kids drive you, that's as far as they can go. No family can come into the hospital with you. So I'm at Mercy Southwest. I'm waiting for a good couple of hours. And then all of a sudden, when they get me in there and I'm hearing, you know, COVID over here, COVID over there. COVID, I was like, Lord, I don't like being in here without the COVID babies. I went, Father, you're going to have to do something about this. You know, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, because I understand this lingo. <laughs> they thought I couldn't understand it. 
-huh. And then all of a sudden, there's like three doctors come up to me and they say, oh, Marilyn. And I'm like, yes. And, and they're like, oh, you shouldn't even be here right now. I'm, I'm like, what? They're like, oh no, it's a miracle that you're even still here. When did this happen? And I was like, well, I believe it was a week ago, you know, and I started sharing with them and they're like, oh no. And so it was the ER doctor and then it was an infectious disease doctor and then it was the surgeon. And then the surgeon said, I need to put a drain in you. We have to get this infection out of you. I can't do anything with your appendix until we get this out of you. And they were just, they just asked me all these different things, but right off the bat, they already said, you worked for a week? Oh, they said, oh, so you're a walking miracle. <laughs> and I went, well, God is good like that. <laughs> oh my God, I said, God, I didn't know what else to say. And they, right off the bat, they went, and so it was still sinking in my head. They said, I'm a walking miracle. They said, this is, the doctors are telling me this. And I work in the medical field. I went, okay, God. But it still hadn't sunk in yet. Right. And so all of a sudden, they started moving really fast. They started moving fast. So, and this was after a CT scan. This was after, this was after labs were drawn. And that's when they, they went. Boom. Okay. This is what we have to do. This is what we're going to try to do. But I was, I was in, I was in there three days before they could, I think on the, on the fourth day, they put a drain. There was so much infection. They couldn't put a drain in me. So oh after that, I started getting fluid around my lungs my blood pressure dropped, my oxygen level dropped. They, they were feeling me, they were trying to see which, which antibiotics were helping. And by then, I mean, everything was starting to kind of swell up on me with all of the fluids and stuff. And so the only thing that would, that would help was the morphine at that point. And so, I just remember doing FaceTime to let every, I, I was I was doing FaceTime when I could. And I was like, I'm still here. God is good. I'm still here. Yes. I'm still here. And so they were trying, they were trying to, they couldn't really get to me, but my family was calling the, you know, nurses, but nobody told me they couldn't tell me. They, I had so much infection in my body that they ran, uh, they ran colon cancer tumor markers on me and didn't tell me until I went to the primary care doctor. They said, well, at least you don't have this. I was like, well, they, they saw a mask. They saw all these things. And I'm trying to tell you the prayers of the saints. When I said the prayer of the, the righteous avails much, that's what I meant. That's when I, they could not give me a straight answer. And it wasn't until I got to my primary care doctor, they said, oh, honey, you don't, you don't even know. And so after a while, then, it, then all of a sudden it hit me all what God was doing, all what, even though they said this and the CT scan said this and that, God has final authority on all things. And it doesn't matter what a CT scan or my, my inflammation infection levels were so high, they thought it was, you know, but God. But God. But God. That guy. So, so that was, that was like seven to eight days in the hospital being released. I got released on by mouth antibiotics without, and, and your antibiotic, I'm, I'm sorry, your appendix is still basically still in, in me, in there. Ruptured appendix. It's, I'm, I'm walking around with a ruptured appendix. No. And but they send you home. Yes. Cause they couldn't do, cause they couldn't, if they did, it was so inflamed. If they cut 
they would cut my colon, then I would have in a, col a, a colostomy oh. bag. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would walk, that would, that would be my way of life. And she said, oh, I can't, I can't touch you. Nobody's going to touch you, Marilyn. So I came home more. I, so I had a regimen of antibiotics, a regimen. Thank yeah. God you were a nurse and knew how to do this, right? I'm sorry. Thank God that you were a nurse and knew how to do you this. You know, um, my daughter came here from Phoenix and she's in, she's going through the RM program. So she, she was, she helped me. She yeah. was the one that got everything together. She slept with me the first few nights until I got on my, she said, mom, you were so high. You were going to fall out the bed on for me. She said, mommy, I, said, I had to, I didn't know if you was breathing. I didn't know if you were doing this. I had to make sure. And so she was, she was, a, she was a godsend. And so I did that for a month and a half. A month and a half. A month and, and a half. Are still in there, and you are and doing this for a month and a half. Yes. That they sent you home to die. They couldn't do. They couldn't do what they wanted to do, and and she just was waiting and waiting and waiting, and at all this time, there was prayers ascending, and all this time. Yes. Um. The, little by little and it was going down and then finally she said i'm gonna go in mm -hmm. i'm gonna take it out i'm gonna take it out um she said but because she wanted to do it laparoscopically okay because then you're it's not the Zorro cut <laughs> okay so you can come Zorro you can come cool. home you know quicker and everything did that she did it and that was August 11th this happened June the 9th but that was August the 11th okay and you had a pick line and everything before that mm -mm. no not yet no so I so I got the appendix out, which was, I was supposed to leave that next day in the hospital for another five days. So she says, um, you still had so much infection. I had to put a drain in you. So the drain was, it was in my abdomen, comes out in a little bulb. So you have to drain the infection that comes out. Wow. She says, okay. I had to do two procedures. So the appendix, and then there's something called a cecum that is attached. She said, when I tried to staple it, it was so much infection, it wouldn't staple. I had to stitch it. So we're just going to be praying that it, that the stitches stay. I went, praise God, I can, you know, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And so so um, the, about the fifth day, my, my fluid that's coming out turns brown. And she says, there's some infection. She said, um, I can't give you what I want to give you because now your body's resistant to it because mm -hmm. you took it for so long. Okay. So now I'm, I'm gonna call the CBC doctor, CBCC, the infectious disease doc, uh, doc has to see what you need to do. So they did a culture. The only thing that he wanted me to have was IV meds. So, oh my God. So I was, I was pretty much a rock. I was pretty much a rock until Home Health brought in this big old box <laughs> of all this medication. And an IV pole, IV pole didn't scare me. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was all these medication. And I'm like, I already have a drain. And when you're not feeling well, you're like, I got to do that. And I'm like, oh, Lord. But I remember God's like, mm -mm, you going through this. And you're going to go through this praising. And you're going to go through this worshiping. And, and I did not want to go through complaining and dragging my feet because I want to get to the other side. Oh, come I'm on. trying to get to the other side and I'm trying to learn something. I said, Lord, you trying, I'm, I'm 
I'm trying to learn what I'm supposed to learn through all this. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you go through something like this, you need to have an inner circle of prayer partners around you. Because I remember when I saw all that and it looked so overwhelming to me, like when Peter got out of the boat and he was walking, and then all of a sudden, the, the he started looking at the waves. I was like, oh my God, I saw bags and bags of IV medication. And I was like, I called, I called my sister-in-law and I got way up here and I went, I tried to see the Jesus inside her eyes. Aww. I tried to see the Jesus. I'm like, I'm trying to see Jesus. Yeah. I'm trying, to, I have to grab a hold. You gonna understand this one right here. I got to grab a hold. Yeah. Come said, on, Marilyn, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. She said, you rise up in your spirit, woman of God. Wow. And so right when, because you can get, you can get weary, but I'm telling you, right when the enemy thinks he, God always has somebody right there. He has somebody to encourage you. And it's like, oh no, 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 no! You've gone this far. You gonna, you gonna walk this thing out. So I learned how to set up everything. I learned. I had, I had to get my pick line. Uh, they had the pick line goes all the way up, and it goes to your heart. Wow! So that the medication can go through, and it can get there quickly. And so I had two ports coming out of me. You have to keep one clean with the saline flush and a blood thinner. That's just to keep it open. The other one is for the medication that you have to do. So I did that and I had the drain. And there was times, there was some times when, <laughs> when I was like, Father, Father. And all of a sudden it would be, he would just come in so sweetly, just like, just, just like, like a little breeze. And I knew he was right there with me. And I said, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. And I praised when I didn't even know where the praise was coming from. I don't even, that prayer, when you go through something like that, I'm telling you, God, it was like he reached down and put a praise in my belly. He put it in there and I was, I was crying up, Father, I'm thankful. Mm. God, I'm so thankful. Father, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful for your goodness. I'm thankful for your mercy. I'm thank you. And, and, and after everything I see, and I'm still looking at other things that are going on in the world and I'm like, but they just need to be thankful. They just need to be thankful. And uh, oh my God, it's just, uh, and that alone, oh Lord Jesus, Father, thank you and praise you, Lord God. So God is doing a work when, when we go through those rough times, he's doing such a work. And it's like, I didn't never think I would praise my way through something like this. I never, I didn't never, I didn't know I would be so thankful, mm. so thankful, so thankful just for his goodness and his mercy, just, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah. some people don't realize that you live by yourself and, and all of that. So can just, you share a little bit of that and, and how you, you could have had a big pity party. Uh, but you didn't. And here you are in this mess all by yourself. Yes. Um, I knew, I knew right away when, when something, when this was getting ready to happen, um, I, I have promises of God. 
God has given me promises. He has, he, I have prophetic words spoken over me of things that I haven't done yet. So I'm telling Father God, this ain't it. <laughs> this is not it because you said, because you said, you know, and, and he, he just reminded me who he was during this whole time. He remind, he was just so sweet. And what I, what I know is that he was taking me deeper in him, deeper into that secret place, deeper in communion with him that I've never had before in my life. I've mm -hmm. never been in communion like this with Father God, ever 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 and when he says when you are weak oh my god mm. that's when he's strong that's when he can be strong in your life but nobody wants to go through and Ooh. i would i'm the one i'm the one when i first started going to to dominion worship center and i would hear people Thing about going through and 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 some people were they were joyous about going through and I was like how can you be joy how can you have joy and you get to go through I'm like oh my God. and then we were at it was a it was a prophetic um, one of the classes I took and one of the intercessors we were you know how we practiced we were practicing. And she said, oh, honey, you haven't seen nothing yet. And she was talking about going through. I wanted to let go of her hand so fast. And said, oh, no, that's somebody else. You're talking about, sister. That ain't me. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, don't. I was like, OK, God. Uh, uh, I didn't. I was like, Lord, have mercy. And I went, Father, let your perfect will be done. Not my will, God, but your will. Your will, God. But in my heart, you know, the first thing you think of, you're like, oh God, no, you know, no. But it, I, I wouldn't know. God's God trying to produce character in me. Wow. He's trying to get me to totally depend on him when nobody, and I mean, it's a place where literally nobody's here. But me and God. Mm. Mm. I'm telling you, God will come and he will, he makes his habitation. He makes, he makes you his dwelling place. When you start praising him and worshiping as you're going through, you're not alone. You're not alone. But anyway, so I had three weeks, I had the drain in my belly for three weeks. I did the IV antibiotics. I was supposed to do two weeks, but after eight days, I had went and got a CT scan done and the infectious disease a doctor went, everything's normal. <laughs> Tell the surgeon she can pull the drain. Wow. She said, he said, um, I've never seen this medication work this fast. And I went, I went, there's nobody but God. <laughs> I don't believe it or not, I didn't care. I said, ain't nobody but God. And I said, I prayed over you. <laughs> Dr. Zanini, that's all you need to know. I said, I prayed over you, I prayed over you, I prayed over you. And so I, to get things pulled out, to get things unplugged, and, but still, you know, I lost, uh, you know, 25 pounds. Um, you still have to regain your strength. Okay. And, you okay. know what I mean? Uh -huh. Eat right. So I have to do my part now so I can continue to stay healthy. Yeah. But yes, it's, it's nobody but God. No, nobody but God within a good three month period three months so 
So with COVID, I mean, you are confined to your house, right? Pretty and, confined, yes. Yeah, pretty confined. And so it is you and God. And for those of you uh, viewers that don't know you, Marilyn, how long has it been since you lost your husband? Um, lost my husband two, it, it will be three years in March. Three years in March. Yes. 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 So if you can, um, viewers, if you can look at this, here's a gal who is a widow and then she gets her house flooded and, and then she gets this, you know, her appendix burst and look at her. She has joy. She has a smile on her face and it just brings tears to my eyes. Marilyn, it's all God. It's beautiful. It gives glory to God of what he can do. It's beautiful. I hope you all viewing can sense the presence of the Lord. He is present to heal right now. He is present to heal. And I believe that there are some people that are sick that are watching this. And you wanted to give up the ghost. You wanted to give up. But this has brought strength into your life tonight. Like. I can fight. It's not like a losing battle. It's not, um, you know, you're not going crazy fighting, right, Marilyn? Absolutely. You crazy. Absolutely. You, know, you fight the good fight of faith. You, you press in, you get your prayer warriors when you're down, um, because like you said, you're not always up. And you, you, you know, sometimes we have to have a present person that we can see Jesus in. I love that. I love that. Yes. Do you have anything to say, honey? Well, I think that, you know, the power of the testimony, I know there's different people that are uh, encountering things and going through things in this season. And I'll just tell you that, you know, God is still in the miracle business. Yes. He's still doing miracles. And, and uh, you know, to hear Marilyn's testimony about her faithfulness to God and how God was faithful to her, and it just, it, it, he's not a respecter of persons. What he's done for her, he can do for you too. And so I think it's an encouragement to all of us that, you know, shake off. If there's something's trying to drag you down or you're dealing with a health issue, uh, you know, pray, shake it off, press through and keep going. Yes, yes, yes. Cause, That's right. Because even, I mean, even, uh, gosh, even when I was, I was mixing I still had my drain in. I was mixing the powder antibiotic into the saline and I was getting ready to, to hang it on my uh, IV pole. And like I said, my sister, Sam from Tulsa, she had called and she said, I have someone here and he's ready to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, well, you used to be a prayer partner back in the day. You go on and get your scriptures out. She said, Marilyn, no, you. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I hung it, started my IV. I said, tell him to open up this Bible. I'm using King James, make sure he got his too. And so I took him through all the scriptures and all that. And I, I said, you're ready, huh? And then, and then my sister said, I said, well, you called me. You getting ready to lay hands on him because he's getting ready to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I mean to tell you, boom. And, and all of a sudden, he was, he was down on the kitchen floor. I mean, he was down there for like probably a good hour and a half, my sister said. <laughs> God would gloriously fill him. And so I'm like, God, you do it. You do it, Holy Ghost. And, and, and I mean... And it was like, well, I've been doing this so long. I might as well, you know, you can still, even though you're going through, you still, you still do what God wants you to do. You still do it. And it's a slap in the devil's face. Woo. It wrecks him. It, when you praise and you worship God as you're going through, you are giving the devil a black eye every time. You're giving him a black eye. And that's what we do. We pushed back principalities and powers. He thought he was going to take my God breath. He thought he was going to take my DNA of God. He ain't taking nothing. 
And, I, and I'm telling you, I live to give the devil a black eye. I live for it now. Because he should never touch God anoint. So that's, I, would, I would tell people, at your worst, give God glory. At your worst. Don't wait until you feel better. Give him glory and give him praise. Glory to God. Give him glory and praise. Bless his name. Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory, all the glory, even when you're going through glory to God, even when you're going through, because he has a plan and a purpose is in that pain. Plan, a purpose is in it. Like I said, nothing's wasted. Nothing is wasted. And the reason why I went through was not just to go through it was to bless other people it was to give out to other people it was to encourage other people and that's why come on that's Amen. all i'm saying that's Amen. right honey that's all i'm saying it was for, and i'm crying telling god thank you because it's for other people mm. You know what, Mary? Other people. Life is not our own, is it? It's not our own. It is not our own. Because God's going to get in and he's going to get a return on his investment. Woo. He will get a return. He's going to get a return. Glory to God. Glory to God. And this is God's return. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I didn't mean to go on. Oh, no, it. you did <laughs> go on. It's so good. It's so good. Glory, glory, glory. Well, um, I, we need to wrap up here, but we're going to have some a prayer time here because you said a couple things, Marilyn. You know, of course, you expounded on when you're going through it, God can still use you, you know, fight the good fight of faith. But you said there's still promises. There's still things for you to do, yeah. you know, and um, I like that as well the promises of God, that we need to be reminded that um, our days on this earth are according to him and we will not be taken out a day early or a day late. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, so uh, I, I just love the fight. I, I want you to pray first, if you will, for people to get their fight back, their prayer back, their intimacy back with God. And then, and then we'll wait and see um, if God calls out some healings for people. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for a healing anointing. Uh, Lord, I thank you for a healing anointing being released right now. Thank you, Jesus. So Marilyn, you go ahead and pray for the, I, I, I encourage the viewers that raise your hand up to Marilyn, up, up to Marilyn so that she can, she can't see you, but you're doing it as an act of faith to receive an impartation. Amen. Father. Father. Mm. Father. Oh, Father, I thank you. Lord, I know, I know that there's people that are weary out there, God. I know there's people that say they have no hope. I know, Father, that there's some that they cry themselves to sleep, God. Mm. But Lord, you're the lifter of their head. You are their way maker and you are the promise keeper. Glory to God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to touch them. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Touch them in the deepest parts of their heart, God. Give them an experience with you, Lord. That intimate experience, God, that only you can give. can nobody else give it but you, God. Speak to them in, in the midnight hour, Father God. As they go along during their day, Father God, I thank you for multiple healings right now in the name of Jesus. I lose the healing power of God. I lose deliverance in the name of Jesus. I lose the peace of God in Jesus' name. We bind the hand of the enemy that would try to come to kill, steal, and to destroy in the name of Jesus. That's 
same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body by his spirit. And you will live and you will not die. And you will praise the name of the Lord. You will praise him like you never praised him before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are kings and you're priests. Hallelujah. You are kings and priests of our God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I thank you for a fight in them, Father God. I thank you, for, Father, that there will be a never giving up spirit released in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you for it, God. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mikisha doranyo sato donama. When they look in the mirror, they'll see, hallelujah. They'll see Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, because it's in him that we live, in him that we move, and in him that we have our being, glory to God. Hallelujah. And you will not forget who you look like. Glory to God. As you behold him, you're changed from glory to glory, and I thank you for it, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, the ones that are hurting, Kisho no moko raman yo so ne meke ne mekisha. Ikio sanama. I speak hope in the name of Jesus. Hope thou in God. Meke so naman yo so na makisha. Thank you, Lord. I just really feel hope and the peace of God being released. Thank you, Lord. But I'm also seeing um, uh, an esophagus, a burning, um, that it's uh, something with the esophagus and there's a burning that you have been experiencing and God is going to touch that area of, of um, uh, right in here. So Father, touch that person right now bring healing in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, if there's any um, appendix troubles out there, God touch them right now. Infection. Yes, God. Holy Spirit, you are true. I thank you for that. Yes, Father. Healing over these airways. Healing in all areas. Uh, I feel he's, he's touching people, uh, someone with arthritis, and uh, also uh, pains, that there's pains in your body, uh, in joints, wherever. And those pains are leaving you and God's healing you. And there's a mom out there that is greatly overwhelmed. And I mean, that, that could be a blanket, but no, there's, there's one that is very, very seriously uh, feels depressed under it. Um, and so I break that mental torment over you right now in Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, yes, God. Take authority over depression in, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And you're going to rise up. You're going to rise up. Yes, 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 yes. yes Fall yes, at the feet of Jesus. Be in the awe of him Jesus. once again. Yes, God. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Marilyn, I am so thankful that you came on tonight. I know it, I can feel God, huh, honey? It's so beautiful. And God is getting the glory. God is getting the glory. So you want to close this out, honey? Yeah, so we really appreciate you coming on and sharing your testimony. I believe it's going to help dozens of people. 
And so thank you very much. We appreciate you. We love you. And, and I really felt as you were sharing towards the end that God's going to give you double for your trouble. Woo. That God is going to bless you. You know, you've been so faithful. So, so uh, sticking with God, praising God. And God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. What the enemies meant to try to destroy you, God says, I'm going to bless you double for all of that. So God bless you. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the testimony, the power of testimony. We thank you, Lord, for the power of who you are. And Lord, we just pray your touch upon each and every one that's watching and whoever watches this even later. God, touch them in their bodies, in their spirit, and in their soul. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, good night, everyone. Love you, Marilyn. Thank you. Love you too. <laughs> good night. Good night.